Good day, my online friends. Today, I just want to share an excerpt or two from my book, Contemporary Issues, Science, Africa, and More. So it's Contemporary Issues, Science, Africa, and More. And I just want to share an excerpt or two with you. So, um, and when you're finished, just go to joshuaspencer.ca to get your copy right away, joshuaspencer.ca. So this is the book, Contemporary Issues, Science, Africa, and More. Josh, Contemporary Issues, Science, Africa, and More. Um, and you can just go to um, joshuaspencer.ca at the end and then get your copy right away, no matter where you live in the world. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to share uh, a definition with you. Um, and then I go into the main part of what I intend to share with you. What is genetic engineering? Genetic engineering is the manipulation of a living organism's genes by the use of techno technological interventions. In so doing, the genetic engineering scientists use the technology to change the genetic expression, nature, and makeup of the living organism. Note that this living organism can be an animal, including human beings, or a plant. This manipulation of the genes of the organisms leads to the creation of an organism with a desired or needed trait or traits and the removal of the unwanted ones. Put another way, genetic engineering is a structured group of technologies employed to change the genetic makeup of cells and to transfer genes across living organisms, plants and animals, including human beings, irrespective of their species. That is to say, genes can be transferred from, say, a cow to a goat and so on to have a desired outcome or trait. It is important for you, my reader, to know that clowning, including human clowning, already discussed in the first essay of this book is a component of genetic engineering. So now I'm going to share with you um, the beginning of what I really had planned. And the question is, is genetic engineering harmful or harmless? During the dusk of the 20th century and the approaching dawn of the 21st, and in particular, since the successful clowning of the sheep Dolly in 1997 by scientists, there have been much commotions, discussions, researches, investigations, and debates on the controversial but contemporary advances in the areas of bio biological and agricultural technologies. Much has been made of genetic human clowning as discussed in the previous section of this book. But there has been an equal flurry and controversy on the matter of genetic engineering in general as it relates both to human clowning, human beings, other animals, and plants. In this essay, I will share some of the arguments that proponents of genetic engineering may present as well as those that may be argued by others who are in opposition to genetic engineering. To give a deeper sense and comprehension of the arguments that may be put forward for or against genetic engineering, and to establish and fortify my readers with the requisite knowledge to arrive at an informed position on the issue, I will define the term genetic engineering explain and outline the two main types of genetic engineering and other science-based terminologies, as well as identify some of the different ways that this new technology is employed. I will also highlight their intended significance as may be purported by the scientific community. My intention in this paper is simply and merely to provide probably information from both sides of the debating boundaries on these issues and to allow my readers to come to their own informed conclusion thereafter. Note the information here is treated and presented mostly 
in a layperson fashion to facilitate easy learning and comprehension. So now I am going to go, sorry that I'm going all over the place, I'm going to go to the meat of the, the essay. Some basics. I'm going to go into the meat of the essay. Just give me a moment here because I don't want to waste your time. I just want to get right into the essay itself. So, some arguments that proponents of genetic engineering may offer. There are possibly several arguments that can or may be put forth in support of genetic engineering. The first argument that one could possibly make for genetic engineering is that it creates new avenues for the rapid development of crucial medicine and for providing human beings with a more enhanced and beneficial life and lifestyle. As the technology of genetic engineering improves and proliferates, it lends itself to deeper knowledge and skills in the handling and treatment of diseases and provides a fuller understanding of the molecular basis of health in relation to the roles of genes or their absence thereof. Genetic engineering is the savior the world has been waiting for, its proponents may postulate in this regard. Secondly, its proponents may further argue that with the reservoir and inundation of information available to experts on genes and their roles in the cause of diseases or the suppressing of them derived through the knowledge imbibed via the Human Genome Project referenced above, the sky is the only limit in terms of the quality benefit humankind, animals, and plants may attain from the biotechnology of genetic engineering. They may also point out that genetic engineering will lead to faster care, diagnosis, and treatment for all, as well as earlier prognosis, greater numbers of people's benefiting and fewer side effects in taking care of patients. There are additional benefits to be derived from genetic engineering, its supporters may show. A possible and probable point that may be made in its support is that in cases where certain adult individuals have the propensity to pass on the gene for diseases such as cancer to their offspring, this could be quickly and easily prevented. The gene responsible for such an undesirable phenomenon could be easily isolated and destroyed through the biotechnology of genetic engineering. This lends to healthier children, which in the long run leads to a healthier society. This in turn promotes the creation of a more productive economy with a more mentally and physically well-endowed class of individuals. Individuals may also be able to benefit from the technology to the extent that it may be able to eradicate certain addictions such as smoking and so on as a result as well. The supporters of genetic engineering may possibly demonstrate other benefits from the scientific innovation of the technology. The argument could be made that some living organisms manufacture compounds that have inherent values that are of a therapeutic nature. For example, it is a known scientific fact that the majority of antibiotics available to our medical practitioners is made from microbes, and there are several types of medicines available of which plants are their original sources. With genetic engineering and its continued development, not only will the supply of these needed products be available, but its output would be significantly strengthened and more likely made more effective. Among some of the benefits that could arise from these plants are cures for diseases that have, to date, evaded the available medic medical treatments, may be the argument. There are still other possible positive points to make for supporting the technology. One that may possibly be introduced in such a discussion by its proponents it's, is its use in the area of gene therapy. 
gene therapy utilizes genes to treat diseases. So instead of say giving regular doses of injections to treat a disease, gene, ther gene therapy can be used to provide a replacement gene that will give the required outcome or simply isolate the defective gene, etc. Some may even argue that it may be possible to use gene therapy to eliminate or prevent diseases such as cancer. Genetic engineering may also be viewed as a positive phenomenon in that, in addition to the above, it is possibly useful in situations such as in the case of patients in need of organ transplants, among other uses. Genetic engineering is not only harmless, but an imperative and useful technology, some may argue, quite vociferously. The point may be made that at the rate at which the Earth's population is expanding, traditional agriculture may not be able to meet the global demand. With genetic engineering, with its component procedures of genetically modified crops, not only will food production be enhanced quantitatively, but it will do so qualitatively and nutritionally as well. Genetic engineering also offers the opportunity to create crops through gene manipulations that will result in plants that are immune to pests and viruses. Consequently, they will need little, if any, pesticides and herbicides. As, unlike the traditional crops, genetically modified crops will need little or no pesticides or herbicides. This serves as a boost to our environment and to protect it. In addition, those supporting the technology may also argue that many of the applications that are currently applied through the biotechnology to our crops are not new that they are and were already practiced in the past. Genetic engineering simply enhances and accelerates the conventional processes already being practiced for ages, may be the argument. It may possibly be queried, then why should this technology be prevented? Finally, there may be support for the techno technology as it helps in the preservation of crops while being transferred from field to market. The technology allegedly can be used to prevent certain crops from getting soft or spoiled through long, rugged transportation from point A to Z, for instance. With the, the current technology, the geneticist may also be able to effect certain modification of the crop's genes to create these desired results. It, accordingly, would be desirable as it offers great economic benefits to farmers and directly to the economy as well. Of course, I don't want this video to be too long. I'll just give you a little part of the, some of the argument that opponents of genetic engineering may proffer. So I'll just give you a part of it and then when just go right away to joshuaspencer.ca to get your, your copy of Contemporary Issues, Science Africa and More. Contemporary Issues, Science Africa and More. There are several arguments that opponents, opponents of genetic engineering may present to demonstrate its harmful effects and undesirability. Firstly, the point may be made that genetic engineering will be used, especially in capitalist-oriented economies chiefly and above everything else to create wealth at all costs. In this stead, factors such as the health of the environment, ecosystems, animals and plants will be insignificant and secondary to everything else. As a consequence, these thinkers may argue that it is not only important that the technology be stopped immediately before it's too late but it is imperative that it be eradicated. Some may argue as well that the methodology involving modifying plant genes will inevitably lead to the degradation not only of the environment, but the specific plants themselves. To effect the genetic modification in plants, beads of gold are shot, blasted from the barrel of a gun 
at approximately 1,000 miles per hour. This is what is claimed by scientists who are opposed to the method used to effect the genetic modification. It leaves these plants with a number of tissues that are targeted to undergo genetic um, serious damage. Accordingly, only a few survive this torture of assault of gold beads. So I'll stop here because I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm asking you, just go to joshuaspencer.ca www.joshuaspencer.ca to get your copy right away. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.